Hi everybody and welcome to this 10th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial. Today we'll be talking about JSF technologies and web pages. Now web pages are extremely difficult to create before JSF technology, but now let's talk about the process of creating web pages using various types of components and core tags that JSF brings to the table. You've already experienced a few of these technologies before in my last tutorial, but I'll be talking about more of them uh, in this tutorial as we'll be going on in detail. So setting up a page in uh, facelets, uh, we can use the facelets X, uh, HTML page to include namespace directives as shown. So these directives are shown with a prefix and a link. So these directives in identify the tag library location and the prefix that is used to distinguish them. For example, the form tag must use the H prefix to use the HTML tag libraries as shown over here. Then there's the common component tag attributes. So common component tag uh, tags have attributes that change the way that they're read by the container. An ID can be used when another container or server side class needs to refer to a component. If you don't create one, then JSF will automatically create one for you. This is represented in code by using the ID equals um, whatever you want to put as the ID. And there's also the immediate attribute, which is used when you want to uh, have an input or action component done faster than others. This is shown in code as an immediate equals true or an immediate equals false. In this case, um, like the, for reference, this is like a, like an Amazon kind of website where you can either continue shopping or you can update the quantities. Here, this uh, continue shopping button allows you to say immediate true, which doesn't process anything in the background and just lets you continue shopping. While the update button actually tells the immediate to be false, telling it that it has to update everything before it goes on with the shopping. Then there is rendered, which takes a Boolean that controls um, the next component, which will be run, which in this case over here will be the um, cart number of items. So if the number of items is greater than zero, then only then will this part of the code be run. Then if you want to add a little style to your class, uh, you can use the style and style class attributes, which allow you to specify the CSS style of your rendered output. In this case, you can say your style class could be list background, and this would be your CSS file. Then there's value binding, which bind a component's value or instance to a data object. We'll be talking about more of that in later, but just understand that um, you can actually bind stuff to a component's value or instance for later use. Then there's adding HTML head and body tags. So this is regular HTML, which you're mostly familiar with, with your head tag and your body tag over here. In JSF, uh, you can't really use HTML since they use XHTML. So what they do instead is they use H head and H body tags, which like I shown before, the namespace is declare, declares this prefix H as um, like taking this library HTML. So then anything with the prefix of H will be uh, of the HTML like library. So that means this head will behave exactly the same as this head and this body will um, like work exactly the same as this body. Then there's form components, which are used to obtain user input like the example here below. For example, this guy, his name's Duke, puts in his name, password, and there's a login. You can also use JSF to perform actions and navigation inside your website. For example, you can create a submit button that takes uh, an action of a managed bean that you can send a method through, which means that if you click this submit button, you can then use the submit method in this managed bean, and then the submit method does something else, and then your command button works as intended. And there's also rendering a link, which is basically almost the same thing as uh, creating a button. But in this case, you create your command link and it has a listener called action listener, which checks for um, like, uh, let's say a click from the link and it outputs the text over here called bundle.book201. Then there's selecting a value. 
now you may want to like let the user select stuff like let's say you want a genre language format or if you want it in print so these things are available like for example using the h select boolean checkbox in your code to create a checkbox using h select one radio to create radio buttons that you can uh so you can like click one at a time and select one menu to allow a drop down menu and h select one list box for list boxes Sometimes you want to use multiple values though. So JSF allows you to you make code for that too. You can use select many checkbox for multiple checkboxes, select many menus for many so you can select many menus from here and many list box right over here. Now finally there's displaying error messages. No matter how well you code, there's going to be error messages, whether it be like network errors or something wrong with the syntax, you have to be ready for errors when they pop up. So this is how it works. Let's say you want the user to type in a number um, from between zero and 10, and you validate the number for, uh, as the minimum of zero and a maximum of 10. And then you submit the value. Um, and let's say he put something like 100. Then this error message will show up telling the color, the font family, the font size, everything for the user number over here. This is how you declare that this message, uh, this error message is for this input text through the ID and through the for user number. Now let's take a look at the bookmarks example. To start off our bookmarks example, let's go ahead and click servers and start our Glassfish server. Now that we have it done building, let's go ahead, open on Google Chrome and type in this URL, localhost 8080 slash bookmarks. And you'll see, that, uh, you'll see that you have your waving Duke and he's asking, my name is Duke, what's yours? And you can go ahead and put your name in, but let's go back to our code and take a look at what is going on. So the first thing that you'll see is uh, you see the graphic image of Duke waving, him asking, my name is Duke, what is yours? And an input text box where you can ask, um, like he's asking what your name is. Let's say if I keep it empty, it'll actually give me an error. As you can see over here, the uh, error message will say error and name is required. Then there's the command button resubmit and command button re reset. Over here, you can see these two. And this submit button, what it does is it uh, actually has an action called response, which calls the response.xhtml. If we open this guy up, it'll call this guy over here. So let's go ahead um, and uh, put in our name Viprov, submit. And this is our response.xhtml. If we go to our NetBeans, we can then see that uh, over here, it's very simple. It's just saying, hello, whatever your name is, as I put in Viprov. And he's giving us a link to go to a personal greeting message. Over here, you can see that we have uh, a param value called name result, which takes in the name and puts it as a value. So we can now then use this name through this param value later on in our greeting uh, or our personal greeting.xhtml. If we open that up and we go back to our code and click on the link, you'll see that your personal greeting from Duke is howdy viprov. If we go back to our code, we can then link everything together. In our metadata, so, uh, and our view param, we can see that it's using the name result back from the response xhtml, and it's getting the same value hello.name. This is how you um, send data between um, facelift pages. And you have your personal greeting from Duke, and you have your graphic image, and you got a command button for going back to the index.xhtml page, which is over here. And if we do that, we go back to our main page. So going through that again, let's go through the link, and you'll see that Viprov over here is represented by this URL over here. This is the whole reason why they're called URL bookmarks. If we change this to something else, let's say Pranov, you can see that it says Howdy Pranav instead. This is how you use URL bookmarking. To finish it off, make sure that you right click and click clean to get rid of all the background files and go ahead and close it. And that's it. That's all there is about using JSF technology in web pages. 
So I hope you understood the process of creating web pages using various types of components and core tags that JSF has to utilize. And I'll see you in the next video.